Why does this watch retail for $600, but this watch retails for $230? Clearly this one, the $600 one, must be much more capable, right? Well, that's not necessarily true. Today, let's see how the Coral Space 3 compares to the Garmin 4Runner 945 LTE. This watch has been my daily driver for a number of years now, so let's see if this thing is really worth the additional almost three times of the Coral Space 3. Now, I think it's important that we lay out what's important to me in a GPS running watch, so you can keep that in mind when we go through this video, because clearly there's gonna be stuff that I care about that you don't care about, and that you care about that I don't care about, because GPS running watches are full of so many different features at this point, like like Climb Pro, you can see your elevation, you can see all these maps, you can see so much data that it will make your mind explode, but I don't really care about that stuff. When it comes to GPS running watches, I'm a pretty simple man, and I only care about three main things. I wanted to have accurate GPS, which both of these do. I wanted to have the ability to connect to external sensors, both of these do as well, but there is a key thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to the corals that we'll get to later on. And I needed to have the ability to track swimming, biking, running, and all that stuff outside, which both of these do. Here are some features that I think others will care about that I don't care about, just to see how they compare on those ends. Sleep tracking. That's not something I really care about. I actually almost never wear my watch to bed because I find that if I look down at my watch in the morning and since I got a poor sleep, even if I feel like I had a good sleep, I'm gonna take my watch and say, oh, I had a terrible sleep. I can't do X, Y, and Z today. I'm exhausted. But you might care about that. So I did wear the Coros Pace 3 and the Garmin 945 LTE to bed over the last few weeks. Yeah, my wife did get a little bit jealous, but I did it for you folks, so a like is deserved for that. One. And I have to say, in terms of accuracy in, in tracking the amount of sleep, they are both pretty accurate, but the Garmin sleep tracking is a bit better in my opinion. I find that having that sleep score gives a good overall package of, oh, this is a good ratio of REM sleep to deep sleep to light sleep to awakeness, but the Coral Space 3 doesn't give you a sleep score, it just gives you the amount of time in each of the sleep stages. So. I'm not really sure if that's good or bad thing that I get more deep sleep than REM sleep or vice versa. So the Garmin sleep tracking is definitely better in my opinion. HRV tracking. That's something that the Garmin 945 LTE does have and a lot of Garmin watches do have by default. The Coral Space 3 does not give you an HRV rating with your heart rate. That I've been able to find anyway, maybe there's some way to enable it. If there is and I'm just missing it, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Training plans. Both Garmin and Coral's offer you free running training plans from a 5K all the way up to a marathon, I do believe. So that's something that's fantastic. Now, it will all come down to personal preference, of course. Coros has the training hub, and Garmin has their Garmin coaching apps. I don't know the exact name. I did try it on both of them, and it is pretty darn good. I personally prefer the Coros interface, but that is just personal preference. Wrist-based heart rate monitor. Not something that's super accurate for me. I always wear an external heart rate sensor when I'm caring about heart rate, so this isn't something I necessarily care about, but I do have to mention something in the Coros Pace 3 testing that I've observed. So wearing both of these running watches out there for runs, I've noticed that the Garmin wrist-based heart rate monitor locks on a lot quicker than the Coros Pace 3. The Coros Pace 3 heart rate monitor during activity I find takes a little bit of time to get an accurate reading. Over the first few minutes of any given run or activity with the Coros Pace 3, my heart rate is always reading much higher than it actually is. And I actually test that by counting my heart rate and comparing it to the time passed. And the Coros Pace 3 has been consistently higher for the first few minutes of the run or activity. But this does steady out and become accurate as the run progresses, but it does give a skewed average heart rate because it is so much higher at the beginning when it shouldn't be. Touchscreen. This is something that a lot of people care about, but I actually have never really used touchscreens on any running watch. The Coral Space 3 does have a touchscreen. It works reasonably well, but I just, it's not something I'm interested in. I much prefer having those tactile feel when I'm out there running, so then I can look down and just know exactly. Instead of just scrolling with my finger, I find touchscreens not the best, but if you're looking for a touchscreen and you're trying to decide between these two watches, the Coral Space 3 has one. Now, I just also want to emphasize that I know the 945 LTE has a bunch of different safety features. You can do like active track and tr group tracking and that type of stuff. So if you're out for long runs or rides or whatever the case may be, your loved ones can track where you're at. And I know that's important for a lot of people, but that's an additional subscription cost and I never really venture far from my host, so I've never done any of that activity. Now, I'm sure there's other features that you might think of that I didn't touch on here that you're interested in and you want to hear the differences between the two watches. 
delicious, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to respond with what I can. Now with those out of the way, let's compare some of the accuracy readings of these two watches. I've had the Coros Pace 3 for about a month and a half now and I've been wearing both that watch and the 945 LTE on my runs. Just double fisting it, you know, getting those readings on one wrist, getting the readings on another wrist, just having a great time when I'm out there running. And I've kind of noticed that the accuracy is pretty darn similar. Actually, the Coros Pace 3 is a bit more accurate in my testing. Now, something that I've always found the Garmin 945 LT struggles with is wooded areas or heavily tall building sided areas. So if I'm running in downtown Halifax or on local trails here with a bunch of wood cover, the 945 LTE Pace is very incorrect, it's super inaccurate. The, the Pace 3, however, in those same areas gives me accurate readings. And how do I know that the Pace 3 is more accurate than the 945 LTE? Just personal feel. I know that when I'm going down a hill, I'm gonna be faster. But if for whatever reason, sometimes the 945 LT thinks I'm going slower downhill than I am going up a hill in these areas. The Pace 3 reflects what I feel and what I feel it should roughly be. In addition to that, something I like a lot about the Coros products is that it gives you pace down to the second. So for example, I could run at a 556 minute per kilometer pace and it would be reflected as not at 556. However, on Garmin devices, 556 pace would be reflected as 555. This is a very small nitpicky thing, but something that I do personally really enjoy. So I do believe that the Pace 3 is more accurate overall because of how it handles those specific situations in heavily wooded areas and areas where there's really high sided buildings all condensed together. I've been able to get a much more accurate reading with the Pace 3 than I get on the 945 LTE. I should mention I live in Halifax, Nova Scotia. For those that don't know, just in case that throws off some GPS satellite signal in the air, who, who knows? I just wanna be complete. Do you remember a few minutes ago when I said external sensor compatibility, that they're both able to connect to external sensors, but I said that the Pace 3 does have something I just wanna mention? That thing is that it does not connect AMP Plus sensors. So it only connects to Bluetooth capable sensors. And that's not a big deal for majority of us. A lot of the heart rate monitors and sensors out there today on the market are Bluetooth compatible. They might also have the AMP Plus, but a lot of them will also just be dual, Bluetooth and AMP Plus. So it's not gonna be a big deal. It hasn't been a big deal for me. All of my sensors have been Bluetooth compatible and they've all worked seamlessly with the Pace 3. So the tone of this video so far, I'm sure you're getting it is, why would you choose the Garmin 945 LTE over the Coros Pace 3? Unless you want those safety features of like active track and those types of things, why would you choose Garmin. The reality is Garmin's been in the game much longer. They have a much more flush out ecosystem. They have the Connect IQ store that allows you to download apps and different things for your watch. Not something I really take advantage of, but something that I know a lot of people do. The sleep tracking is definitely better. So if that's something you're really concerned about, go towards those Garmin watches. But for me, I don't know why I would choose the Garmin over the Coros right now, because the Coros does everything I need it to do, and it's a third of the price. Now, yes, the 945 LTE does go on sale quite a bit because it's an aging watch, if you can call two years aging, but it is getting older now. But when it comes down to it, I don't feel that I'm losing anything by switching to the Coros. If anything, I'm gaining things that I personally enjoy more, such as the better user interface for the training programs, the ability to see the pace down to the second, and I actually just find it a bit more comfortable on my watch. So for me, I'm actually gonna be switching to the Coros Pace 3 as my daily driver from now on. So when it comes down to it, folks, if you're someone like me that really only cares about accurate GPS, having the ability to connect external sensors, and the ability to track swim, bike, and run, and whatever other activity, I don't see why you wouldn't go for the Coros Pace 3. It's the best value on the market, in my opinion, and I believe it's an opinion of a lot of others as well. It's just a fantastic option for all of us, and I'm so happy that they're pushing the bar and making sure that the cost of these multi-sport watches isn't astronomical and is a massive gateway to all of us. So thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Have you tried the Coros Pace 3 before? Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more, and why not join our Discord community to meet like-minded people? Link to that in the description down below. And if you wanna pick up either of these watches, I'll leave a link to those in the description down below as well. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.